So we've covered motherboards that are very, very expensive. And some of them are behind me over there and they cost 10 times the price what I have over here. This motherboard here costs only $120. Perhaps that's all the motherboard you need. And if you think that is still expensive, I've got some even more cheaper options coming your way. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So this is the Gigabyte B7 M DS 3H DDR4 motherboard. There's a few things that's already going for this motherboard. It's straight away 13th gen compatible Inter CPU, so you can pop your 13th gen in and there's absolutely no problem. Second of all, it's DDR4, which helps you to get the costs down even more. And there's a few other things that are going for this motherboard, but let's take a look. We've got two SATA cables, we've got the back IO shield and some instructions instructions, manuals or installation guides and that's about it. Which is good because the lower end motherboards you don't want to pay for any of the extras. You want to get as much of the actual meat as possible. Ooh, interesting smell. First thing I'm noticing is that the back of the motherboard is actually brown. So Noctua is gonna love this PC. So first of all, we've got the LGA 1700 socket here that supports 12th and 13th gen. Depending if you wanna run any of these, they're supported in there. So if you wanna keep the cost down even more, go with the likes of 12400 Intel CPUs. You're gonna get amazing performance with the six cores as well as the iGPU. Now we've got some VRMs in here and the top ones and the side ones aren't quite under the heatsink. So there is some heatsink here cooling the motherboard down for the power delivery, which is good. Then we've got four DDR4 slots supporting up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4. Overclocking is supported as well, so if you want to get some of the fast DDR4 kits, but then it kind of doesn't make sense. Maybe you want to get with a higher end motherboard to get better DDR4 speeds, but it does support overclocking on the motherboard, XMPs and all sorts. There is one EPS power connector for your CPU and one 24 pin ATX power connector. In terms of the CPU fans, we've got a system fan on the top there, CPU fan, system fan 2, system fan 3, so that will do. All of these have Q fans from the BIOS so you can adjust them, but there's no AIO pump header, but you can easily use a system fan or a CPU fan if you want there as well. Then we've got them some SATA ports there, one, two here, and then one, two there, four all together. Moving on, we have a front panel USB 3.2 header here. This is a Gen 1 header, so five gigabits in speed, front panel. We have clear CMOS and reset buttons or headers on the bottom here. Front panel goes over there. TPM header, two USB 2.0 headers, as you can see here. And we have some RGB headers. We've got 12 volt and five volt over here. Now, interestingly, this header here and this look very, very similar on the bottom here, but this one here is the SPDIF header next to the front panel audio here. So the audio headers are all together there. We have a COM header, a COM port, then there's an LPT header for some extra things or optional header. Probably for most people, this is not important, but someone who wants to get the cost down and adjust some things or get some extra features or extra headers and configurations, then this might be important there. There is a reset switch in here and a GU flash button there. So you can update the BIOS without the CPU installed or any of these, which is awesome about these Gigabyte DS3H boards. Now let's take a look at the M.2 slots. There is a two of them. One over here. The top one, this is connected to the CPU and this is PCI Gen 4X4 slot. So full fat speed there. And there is a little heatsink even on it that can cool the CPU down. And then the thermal pad on the top, nothing underneath. And bear in mind, it is only 80 millimeters supported here. You can't go any further or any lower. You probably can go further, but then it's just gonna be flopping there. You can't fully secure it down. And then there's a secondary slot here, which will give you also PCI Gen 4 X4 slot, and that goes through the chipset to the CPU. And there's like a little uh, quick release kind of a system going on here. Little plastic that you can twist and that will hold your M.2 in place. 
there's no heatsink for the secondary slot there. And I want to mention about this B760 motherboard compared to the B660 motherboards, which I'm going to talk about in the end of the video for some budget options. Even though B660 M motherboards can be cheaper, what you will lose is the secondary Gen 4 M.2 slot. There is a secondary M.2 slot, but it will be only Gen 3 speeds. And here on the B760 motherboards, which are only a fraction more expensive, sometimes 10, sometimes $5, you get a gen 4 speeds from the secondary m.2 slots just so you know in terms of expansion slots we've got one 16 full size pca slot and this is 16 gen 4 lanes to the cpu most likely for your gpu and then there's two more expansion slots and these are both gen 3 x1 slots so that's for your bluetooth wi-fi more LAN connectivity something like that you can fit them in there now bear in mind, if you do have more than two slots thick GPU in here, you're gonna lose the access to these. If you're gonna run a 4090 in here, then you might lose access to all of these ports. As you can see, this Gigabyte 4090 Gaming OC, if we do slot it in there, as you can see, getting access to this part in here, um, not so easy. But the cool thing about these motherboards is that you will get this little notch, latch on the bottom here so you can easily remove your GPU. Now it's not the one that Asus has over there but it will give you an easier access to unlock this over there. And finally the I.O. of the motherboard which perhaps is the most interesting here because there's not a lot of motherboards that support what you have over here. First of all we've got audio ports there. Not the full 7.1 surround system but your mic, line in and sub I think or one more line. Then you've got a 2.5 gigabit LAN. Now that is quite rare as well. To get 2.5 gigabits in such a cheap board, that's not so easy. Now there is an MSI B760 Pro motherboard, which also supports DDR4, but MSI will have only one gigabit LAN port there. And you're not gonna get these display ports. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four video outputs on this motherboard. So that's from the iGPU. There's two display ports here, one HDMI and then one VGA. So in theory, with this motherboard, with just the iGPU, you can get four monitor support, which can be very interesting for some people. Also, in terms of USB connectivity, there's quite a lot there. You've got one PS2 switch for your old keyboards and mice two USB 2.0 ports there, then three five gigabits USB type A ports here, and then one type C port, which is 10 gigabits in speed rated. So actually quite a good IO for such a cheap motherboard. Now, all in all together, you can see that you get probably most of these things that you need for your motherboard. The one thing that you might need is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support if you wanna have connectivity with some of your headsets or, you know, mice or some other peripherals, then you're gonna have to use these expansion slots here, but bear in mind, you will have a little bit of a trouble there if you have a massive, massive GPU in here. But some of you people who wanna keep the cost very much down, have even a 13900K in here if you want, for all you like, it is fully supported. And an RTX 4090, you're gonna have to use some kind of USB adapter or connector to get support for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you wanna pick up this motherboard, I'm gonna leave it in the description below, but I did mention that there are some even more cheaper options for some of you who wanna be even more on a budget. Now, as you can see on Amazon, this motherboard is 119 or $120 here, one cent short of that. You might get it on a deal somewhere else, but just so you know, this is the price right now. You can see this is MSI board, that is B760M as well, which is a good competitor here. But as I mentioned there, the LAN is a little bit lower speed and the video outputs is one less. And that's where this Gigabyte board will actually win. Also, the MSI board doesn't seem to have GU flash support so you will have to update the bios with the cpu but it's not that big of a deal because you're not going to put a 14th 14th gen cpu there and 12th and 13th gen will be supported out of the box but now some of the cheaper options gigabyte will have the b660 m dh has three so exactly the same board basically but ddr4 version and the last chipset now this is the ax version which you will get wi-fi with as well there is the non ax version which will come even cheaper at $84. And this does support 13th gen and 12th gen, 
But some of the downsides are that it doesn't have a Gen 4 M.2 slot there, but it is much cheaper as well. You can save extra $40 if you want to go for that one. Four display outputs as well as 2.5 gigabit LAN. So it's very, very similar as what we have here on the B760, but loses just some of the bandwidth of the M.2 connector over there as well as out of the box 13th gen support. But even this supports QFlash, you can easily update the BIOS without your CPU, or even if you have 13th gen CPU, plug everything in, put the BIOS in the back of the motherboard, press the button, it will update the BIOS and then your CPU will be supported. So this is even bigger of a deal to get even cheaper of a motherboard to get supported there. And if you do want the Wi-Fi supported here as well, now, the good thing is with, with basically the Wi-Fi board, you do have an extra connector there because as you can see, the Wi-Fi card there is swappable. So you can, in theory, swap the Wi-Fi card out there as well, which everything else though will be the same. Another cheap alternative is this ASRock B660M board, as you can see here. Now, this has a bit more like different design and perhaps better heat sinks for your power delivery. It does have two M.2 connectors here, as you can see, one on the bottom there for Gen 3. This is Gen 4 on the top there and then a Wi-Fi connector here as well. So you will have Wi-Fi M.2 support there. Interestingly, the bottom slot is full size PCIe support. As you can see, even though the pins go this way, so it's either two lanes or one lanes of PCA Gen 3 in there. In terms of the I.O., the downside is it's very, very basic. Only two display ports, no type C, just some five gigabit USB 2.0 headers and one gigabit LAN port there. So not as good or as fast. And then there's another very, very cheap option here that we have the ASRock B660M Micro ATX B660 motherboard, as you can see here. There is the Wi-Fi port in there, as you can see, and secondary M.2 slot. Very, very basic. The downside is you only have two memory slots there and one gigabit LAN port, not 2.5 gigabit LAN port. And when you compare this to the Gigabyte B660 motherboard that was $86, then this $98 dollar one doesn't quite makes as much sense as the gigabyte one so i'm gonna leave everything that i talked about in the description below but sometimes when you want to just build a pc and get the best performance you don't want to spend loads on the motherboard and as you can see there are some cheap options available for the 13th gen and 12th gen intel cpus now feel free to check this motherboard and the suggestions out in the description below as well as the best bank for buck pc build guide if you want to know which pcs i would go for and what i would build for the best bang for buck then check out the video in the description below perhaps you want to change the motherboard to this one to change out and save even more but there is some good tips in there for videographers photographers 3d so check them out in the description below there is one for your budget thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye